Today, I'm gonna break down how I took these off the shelf LED strips and turned it into this large scale LED display. Now you're probably wondering, how do I even begin to start a project like this? How do I power it? How do I program something like this? Well, stay tuned. We're gonna break it all down today while I show you how I built the Radiant Rose. So I've worked with LED strips before in a small capacity. I've dabbled with Arduinos and how to power them and program them, but nothing of this scale. So I would need to bring in some professional help to make sure that I didn't break anything or I didn't burn anything. Along with that, I knew that we would need a robust program to make sure that our LED lights could show a full range of effects. We wanted to take all of these components and create a mesmerizing display that would wow audiences coming into the upcoming festival. With a project this big, a solid plan was key. After consulting with my electrical engineering partner, Ryan, we decided on a couple key factors of our display. We wanted to keep things in a semi-circular formation to use a LiDAR sensor to track users inside of the exhibit as they were moving around. Now for a system this big, we have a couple key components that we need. We need the LED bars, and with this design, we would need about 180 of them to make sure that we had all the coverage we needed. We need a power supply that was rated to handle thousands of LEDs, we need some sort of central control computer that would display all of the animations over the course of the night in a pre-programmed sequence. We also needed a control board that would take the commands from our computer and turn them into a signal that our LEDs could read. The first step of production was to build a couple prototype bars. This was to allow us to test the software, the control board, and our power supply to make sure that everything was talking to each other and that we had a solid design to take into manufacturing. We designed this LED bar with a aluminum channel with a diffusion plate on the front and then a male and female connector coming out on both sides. These LEDs would run in serial up and down the racks throughout. Cool, so we have our prototype bars, we've established our manufacturing process. And here's how that broke down. Step one, we cut our LED strips to length. Step two, we would have Ryan solder the connections to the thin LED pads. Shout out to him, he did a lot of connections and he did an amazing job throughout this whole project. Step three, once the connections have been soldered, we wanted to take them and make sure that they were working before we glued them into the bars. We would check the electrical connections and then run it through a test bench using our Arduino to make sure that all the LEDs lit up in sequence and that all the LEDs were showing the proper colors. Step four, once the connections have been tested, we then seal the ends to make sure that they are weatherproofed since we knew this display was gonna be living outside. Step five, we took our LED strips and we glued them into the aluminum channel so that they wouldn't shift around after being installed. Cool, this was our production process. We had everything going, we knew that we had an assembly line ready. Now we just need to repeat it 180 times. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. At this point, we were starting to build up a good collection of bars and our software was at a good baseline where we could start testing those bars. Now, I'm not gonna break down the software in this video, but make sure you subscribe so you can see my dedicated video about the programming side of this whole project. So we have a good collection of bars up and ready to go. We start running them through some basic tests. Now, at this point, everything was pretty theoretical. You know, we knew that our software should work. We knew our bars should work. We know our power supply should work but none of it had actually been tested and actually working all together. So we started small. We started with three bars and then slowly started to build out to more and more bars. And each time we were checking our electrical needs to make sure that we weren't gonna blow our power. So we were about two weeks away from installation at this point. We still had some more bars to manufacture, but we were testing along the ways. We had a low failure rate for our bars and we were confident that everything was gonna work out. Our power needs were within range and we were ready to go. Our next step, was to take it to the metal fabrication shop 
where we're gonna install all the bars onto the metal racks and run the whole system as one. Every time I plugged in the power for this display, it was gut-wrenching. I knew our math was good that we were supposed to be within line, but this was still the biggest project that I had ever done before. This was our time to start double-checking all of our work. We double-checked our connections, our board, our power supply, and everything was looking good. We were ready to do a full-scale test. We held our breath and plugged in the power. Everything seemed to be running well. We had to troubleshoot a few small issues, but other than that, all of our lights were working, our tracking system was working, and we were ready to go for the installation. The rest of that evening, we were just running around just ecstatic about our whole process working and the project being ready. We threw together a couple last minute looks to make sure that the process was working, and we were just throwing out ideas left and right about how we can make this installation better. The sun set outside and the sculpture lit up the shop. We were ready to install the sculpture on the site and entertain the crowds. So much work went into this sculpture and we were ready to present it to the world. I'm excited to present to you the Radiant Rose. Thank you again for checking out this video. Very much appreciate you coming through this whole ride with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe while I break down more of my lighting projects and see where I go in the future.